Lincoln Riley has a lot of work to do for USC football. He has a lot of rebuilding. And it's so strange in college football. We never think that things are going to change, right? Alabama is going to be good forever, right? No, they won't. Eventually, they won't be the kings of college football. As long as Saban is there, they probably will be. But all it takes is one coaching change. Saban's going to retire eventually. I'm not saying it'll be soon. It probably won't be. But eventually, he will move on, and things will not be the same. And when you think back to USC football when Pete Carroll was dominating, not just the Pac-12 and the West Coast, but the entire country and was that close, an epic game away from three straight national championship games, it was hard to imagine at the time that one day USC could have a 4-8 and eight season and struggle in recruiting, be all the way down to 65th in the country. That is where the Trojans currently find themselves after – a sub-500 year in which they fired Clay Helton and then had an interim head coach who they did not end up hiring like Washington State did, and then went out and made some big-time news with Lincoln Riley. So the expectation for Lincoln Riley, and rightfully so, is that he's going to be able to bring in high-quality, skill-position offensive players on a regular basis. And that's a very realistic expectation for USC and Pac-12 fans that that's a thing that's going to happen, especially at the quarterback position, because Lincoln Riley... All he does is score a bunch of points and send quarterbacks to the NFL to be starters. That's all he's proven to done so far. Done so done. Let me try that again. That's all he has proven to have done so far in college football. There you go, Spencer. English. So they add a 2023 four-star running back by the name of Quinton Joyner. He is the second running back in the class of 23 for the Trojans. Uh, he joins Relique Brown, who's a much higher rated four star, who's 5'8, 185 pounds. Both of these guys are uh, pretty quick. So, Joyner is described as a speedster. And when I hear that and think of a brilliant offensive mind like Lincoln Riley and getting a guy who has versatility at the running back position and, you know, can make guys miss, throw stiff, stiff arm every now and then. But when you hear speedster and you think explosive offense, those two things go together like peanut butter and jelly, like mayonnaise and turkey on a sandwich. You know, it's just really, really good combos that go together naturally, right? I know you hear peanut butter and jelly a lot. You probably don't hear turkey and mayonnaise as often, but have you ever had a turkey sandwich without mayonnaise? I didn't think so. Have you ever had an explosive offense without explosive players? I did not think so. This is the sort of guy who I think fits really well with Lincoln Riley, and we'll see if he ends up using him exclusively as a running back. But one thing Lincoln Riley has been known to do exceptionally well is utilize his running backs in the passing game. And so if Joyner is a capable pass, just a capable pass catcher, Riley would be able to get him the ball in space and you know allow him to make plays and use that great speed by the time he you know puts on a USC uniform. He's class 2023 20, once again. But if he is able to be a pass catcher, then this is the sort of guy that, that Lincoln Riley is recruiting for a reason because he knows how he can use him and see it, and he can see that there are a number of different ways he could use a guy like Quentin Joyner. And USC will have to find a regular running back who's a between the tackles guy for next season, right? They kind of have a stopgap solution this year in Travis Dye, the Oregon transfer, who Despite his size, he's not a big guy, but I assure you, he can run between the tackles. He can run outside as well. He is an excellent, excellent pass catcher. I'm excited to see what Lincoln Riley can do with, with Travis Dye because he was one of the leaders, if not the leader, in all-purpose yards this past season for the Pac-12, and he, he was just exceptional for the Ducks. He was carrying their offense on a weekly basis after C.J. Verdell went down with an injury in Week 4 against Stanford. So. I think that Travis Dye is a really good solution for now, but eventually Lincoln Riley will have to do what he really never had to do at Oklahoma, and that's rebuild a program. Because remember, he came in as the offensive coordinator. Bob Stoops was there. Bob Stoops retired. They promote Lincoln Riley, and boom, Oklahoma football stays relevant. But there's a difference between taking over a brand that's already strong and making it even stronger and rebuilding a, a, a historic brand that has been dying the last several years. And so recruiting is where that starts. And they have not had the sort of 
instant recruiting success that Dan Lanning has found when he made the transition from Georgia up to Oregon this offseason. He's got the Ducks currently, I think last time I checked, 24-7 at number 13 class in the country after it had fallen down to the 50s and 60s. USC is number 65 in the country behind UCLA and Arizona. Let me just say right now, that's not a trend that's going to continue. That is an off-season ordeal, and USC was very active in the portal, of course. They bring over Mario and Caleb Williams from Oklahoma. They added a bunch of other guys. There are actually five Pac-12 transfers on the roster, so they're starting to kind of siphon guys away from other schools because people are sensing what Lincoln Riley is capable of doing with USC. So I think it's good that the Trojans are you know, starting to turn their attention and highlighting victories, which is important, of course, on the recruiting trail, because you can't just do it in the transfer portal, right? The, the transfer portal is important. There's no doubt about that. You have to utilize it now in college football, or you're just going to be behind the times, and you won't be able to, to get the sorts of players that everybody else is having access to that can help your team right away. A lot of times, very experienced players like Travis Dye. But eventually, they will have to recruit at a higher level than they have been uh, the last several years. And being number 65 in the country, I am going to go way out on a limb here. I mean, this is just the, the hottest of hot takes, like incoming flaming hot cannonball from above. That's the lowest recruiting class Lincoln Riley will ever be a part of at USC. I know. I know. How could I be so brash? How could I be so bold? Where do I get the gall to put takes out there like that? I don't know. Maybe I was born with it. Maybe I developed it. We will never truly know. But they did really well in the transfer portal this year. I think that's a good sign for USC and the early momentum that they are building, that guys who have played college football want to go there because now recruits are going to want to. And remember, this Quentin Joyner guy, the, the speedster running back, is from the state of Texas. Lincoln Riley comes from Oklahoma. He's got a lot of relationships with high school coaches and schools on the ground in Texas and Oklahoma, but most importantly, Texas, where there are a lot of big-time recruits. So that's an element that he brings to USC that is already bearing some fruit for the Trojans as they look to build on, you know, this is an early member of the class, of course, but they should have, they should expect to have a strong recruiting class once they get a full cycle in, in the class of 2023. And Lincoln Riley has to be the guy headlining that. And of course, you're going to look at the offensive side of the ball because he's one of the smartest offensive minds we've seen in college football, really, in, in the last 20, 30 years. So it, it's good that the Trojans are getting some early 2023 recruiting successes from a conference and a team perspective. And, you know, the, the early returns are good. This is the number 13 running back in the class of 2023. So top 15 at his position, top 40 player in the state of Texas. Normally top 40 in a state is not a, a huge indicator of a potentially good player. But when you're in the states of Texas, California or Florida, getting a top 40 player is a really, really good sign.